What's up, Prefam? We're here looking at the Omniprint 330. These are the TXs, right? TX Plus. The TX Pluses. We got two of them here. We're going to, I'm going to ask questions. If you have follow up questions, leave them down in the comments. But thank you to firesprint.com for sponsoring today's video. Let's go ahead and just jump into some questions. All right, so I'm going to do just a quick rundown of the equipment. We've got a pre-treat machine, which he said is super finicky. We'll talk about that in a second. We got two Hotronics 16 by 20s, two Omniprints 330TXs, and then a third pre or whatever those things are called, heat presses. It's the automatic clamshell. Is there anything you don't like about them or anything that you would do different in picking a machine? I know as you have one that's down. Go, yep. Um, no, I I really like the ones we got because they have the hover option because now these do the direct to film, which you need to hover to do direct to film. So being able to get the hover one is pretty important. And then if you have if you have one machine, you want two heat presses. And where I have two, three comes in handy because uh, curing pre-treatment can really be a bottleneck in your production. Yeah, so normally they pre-treat and heat, use this heat press, but this heat press has a problem where every time they turn on, it's tripping a breaker. He just hasn't had time to call to get that fixed. And so that's what he means is having a dedicated heat press for pre-treat has been helpful to also then have a dedicated heat press for each machine. We're, we're doing Christmas rush orders and it's all sorts of fun happening here. We'll see if we can get this printing. So it does a layer of white and then it goes back and does the layer of color even though this design has like no color to it. So what made you pick Omniprint? Um, we were doing a lot of research and found out that the, three, the 330TX Plus is the only direct to garment printer that can do polyester, which is a huge deal. Because if you get a shirt that's like even 50-50, a lot of direct garment printers won't take it. And these, it's just not a problem. You can do full polyester, full cotton. It just doesn't really matter. You can take. How long have you had the machines? Uh, just about a year. Coming up on a year. Have you had many complaints about like washability, stretchability, designs coming off, anything like that? No, as far as print quality, it's been really good. Um, I've had, the only thing I've had is like pre-treatment. Every once in a while, there'll be like a box that stays pre-treatment. Uh, it's been pretty, pretty far and few between, but that is one of the, just like a globby section of pre-treatment that didn't wash out or something. But print quality, I feel like it stayed really well. Did you buy both machines at the same time or did you buy one and then decide you wanted another one to up productivity? Nope. Yeah, I bought this one, which is funny because it's section number two, but it's number one. And then I bought this one. And this one, when it came to me, uh, it arrived at my house, DOA. It was dead on arrival. Nice little print. Pretty. Oh, yeah, this is set on manual mode. You can set it to auto to automatically do the second color after the first one. Yeah. Um, so this one was dead. How was that yeah, so, like experience? Honestly, yeah, like it sucked that it was dead on arrival, but it was just the so you got the wet cap system, and for whatever reason, the wet cap system wasn't functioning properly. And it was just the way that it came to me. And so I called them. We got on a video call and showed them that it wasn't working. And they overnighted me a new print head or a wet cap. And then from there, they get on Zoom and, like, you install it with them. But that's the – so, like, everything else 
doesn't really go out. And they tell you that the print head, every once in a while, will. It's just one of those, like, consumable parts. Um, but as far as, like, I've had them both. In fact, I think I've had... I've had the one almost a year. The other one was just a couple months behind it. And I've only had to replace the one that came that way. I haven't had any other, like, major... So you only replaced it when it was dead, not... I haven't replaced any at all since. just gone out. Got it. And you've had them both just about a year. You have had some some ink blowout issues. <laughs> yeah. It gets messy, you know. And some spilling that happens. But it's that was another reason that we chose Omniprint is these reservoirs on the back. This is a game changer because you can just open it up, add ink. So I've got my bottles and I just add ink rather than trying to buy cartridges. You just buy like liters. I think they're I think they're liters. They're big. And then you just throw we're, it in there. We're American. We don't know what these measurements are. So if I touch this, will you be mad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then as far as uh, heat press goes, you do 90 seconds for every layer of ink. So if you're doing like a light color shirt and you only need one, then you can get away with one press, where this one has two layers of ink, then it gets two presses. So 90 seconds, open, and, 90 seconds, and then it's done. Yep. And these are cotton shirts, so they are at 320. Well, those are next level, which number are they? Oh, I don't know. 3200, 6210. Whatever the 100% <laughs> cotton is, basic 100% cotton. I knew all the Bella Canvas numbers. I don't know the next level ones yet. So is there anything that you regret about it? No. I, I mean, I, they're awesome. So they as far them. as like profitability, what like really good profitability, decent profit, like, so I feel quit like your if, day job, buy two of them, and go ham. If you can get the right connection and the right, like, avenue of, like, selling, then it's super profitable. So, like, that shirt that I just printed, it's got a really cool system mm -hmm. here. I can go in here and open up this, and it will actually break down. So, so this is just the RIP software? Yeah. Um, so that was 80 cents in ink to print that shirt. And that's mostly because white ink is obviously with everything, the so most expensive 80 cents of ink, 40 cents of pre-treat. So a dollar 20. Yep. And then plus your cost of shirt. Whereas like this one that we did earlier, um, that was a single layer. Oh no, that was not the single layer. It's 33 cents. That. That's cheap. Yeah, it's super cheap. And this is a 9 by 12. I mean, it's a big print. It's 33 cents because it wasn't white. It was. Do you find that those are accurate based off of what you're paying for ink? I do. Yeah, because I've got a spreadsheet and I... So basically, I have it broken down that every job I break out... So let's say I'm doing like 100 t-shirts. I will break out... 100 t-shirts and it was 33 cents in ink and I'll throw it in a spreadsheet and it eventually will calculate over time. And so when I go to buy more ink, I have a total of like what I should spend on more ink and it was down to like $20. So as and long as you do it properly, like... You have a machine for each printer? Yep. Yeah. So can you run both printers off of one machine or you can, is it just easier for you? Well, your... you can run. Technically, I can run both, but I can't print them at the same time. Got it. So if I'm running two machines at the same time, I have to have separate printers. But if you're just like bouncing back and forth, you can have one computer. Got it. So, and then you've got different platens you can do. This is for like a chest print. Um, and you can do like two at the same time. Um, or like a, a youth t-shirt. Or you can print on the platen. Or you can print on the platen. You know, happens. Actually, I think that one was, it was like a white t-shirt or something. Oh, and it just bled through. through it. 
Is that like a cap press right there? Hat yeah, clamp? That Hat one champ? Is. Hat champ. I haven't perfected Does that actually yet. work? Yeah, in theory. It looks like it would do masks too. Technically, you can do like shoes with this thing. So you'd have to have the right type Could of shoe. Could you do a Richardson 112 with that? Um, we should probably try. We should. I didn't bring any. They're worth a lot of money right now. But, I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't be able to. See, I use it a ton, clearly. <laughs> it's dusty. Don't mind the dust. And we've got sweet platens down there. Can do sleeves. So sleeves, adults, youth, toddler. Yep, and same thing with the... I've got all the different sizes for heat presses. You can swap out so you don't have to press the whole thing. Oh, and here's it's almost the second done. press. The shirt's going to be done. The steamy reveal. So steamy. So see, this one only had these dots that were colored. <laughs> Everything else was white. Yeah, so it's deceiving. It's a full color, but. But this one was the 33 cent one? No, this one was 80. For the one, oh yeah, 80 plus pre treat, a dollar 20. Yep. So, I mean, if you're, like, if you're going to get the shirt for three bucks, you're in at a dollar 20. I mean, five dollars for a shirt, and that's with a little bit extra, you could throw labor in there and then turn around and sell it for 15. 20. What did you sell these shirts for? What did I sell them for? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> They're for a friend, so <laughs> free. But I, but I mean, like typically a like a t-shirt. If it's last minute, you could do a shirt for like fifteen bucks, and people won't bat an eye. And then depending on the size, you do, you know, How, twenty dollars. So you just did those shirts for me. They're these shirts right here. Yeah. How much do you think I sold those for? Knowing you, probably. Less than you could have. Well, I sold them for more than you said that you could sell those for. Oh, really? So, oh, sweet. So, what do you think I did? Twenty-five bucks. Twenty-eight dollars a piece. Nice. <laughs> I gotta pay you. I gotta, I gotta get you. Gotta get you some chicken nugget money. I mean, that's <laughs> the thing is, I a lot of the people I work with end up like I'm gonna print some for a skate shop out of bountiful and so it's hard because like i want to let them have margins too they'll be able to resell it right so when it, with jobs like this where they're clearly just getting them for themselves like yeah you know they're gonna pay 25 30 bucks like really and not care but when they're like oh i want to turn around and do my own business like that's when it gets tricky because it's like i need it for 10 bucks like i don't know so it depends on like if you're gonna do an etsy shop or like a Amazon, I mean, technically you even do like an Amazon shop and doing one-offs, then yeah, you make a freaking killing. And like, we're doing Bear River Wrestling. Prints are awesome. Did the red, did you have to do a white underprint on that? No, nope, that's just a single pass. Same. Black. Because usually with screen printing, if you're doing black, you only have to do a single pass. Do you find that if you're doing black... In general, you only yeah. have to do a single pass. In fact, I I used I would say that when I started, I probably overdid the white underbase. Um, can't find the Bear River one. Bear River. So that one there was twenty two cents to print that hoodie. Wow. And you know margins on hoodies, you know. So really the worst part about DTG is how long it takes each one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really. Because that probably affected, it'll show our run time as well. So the last one we did, it was 3 minutes and 50 seconds of printing. So 350 plus 90, 180 to press. So it was 350 for this shirt. And then it was two presses at 90 seconds each. Yep. Plus, how long was the pre-treat press? 30 seconds. And then pre-treat was like, pre was like 10 five. seconds. <laughs> Not nothing at all. But the nice thing is, where I've got two of them, I've got one printing 
one pressing, one printing, one pressing. And then by the time it's done, I swap. So I do a full swap and I can go through a lot quicker. If you've got like, it's, it's almost as easy to do 10 as it is to do one, you know, once you've got the system going and you're like heating one, pressing one, it's, it's so easy. Is there a way, like, say you're doing like 50 different designs, all different shirts. Is there a way to queue it up in the rip so that it goes just automatically to the next print? Um, or is it more manual or you don't usually do it that way? So there might be. The problem is, like, if you, so if you've got like a shirt that's not the same style, so it's a little thicker, you have to do a height adjustment. And versus a hoodie and the platen changes the height a little bit so all those go into consideration and then you've got your uh environments here so we've got black cotton black poly dark cotton dark poly white cotton white poly and depending on what shirt you're working with you have to choose that so there's a lot that goes into the setup but i mean i can do it now in like you know 10 seconds i throw it up and you will orient the print you come here and you can select the size and the margin and all that stuff um, but I can have all these windows open. So if I need to go back and print something, I can pull this up and just print and it'll also save. So if you watch the, like I have this one here and then I go to this one, it saves, it those saves the, all the things. And that'll even go back to like this one here, I save it so I can come back and it'll, it'll even change the environment. Like everything switches over. So if you want to queue it up beforehand and get them all ready, then you could go through and click print, click print, click print. But there is going to be a manual setup to get it going. Got it. So long answer to easy question. Work. <laughs> so, so you said earlier that the pre-treat was the bane of your existence. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> it's messy. It's messy and it clogs really easy. Um, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't even like super clog. Like I don't get like clog in the line. It's more like the head will be clogged. So you have to take it off and clean it out really good. So like the nozzle. Yeah. The nozzle. Up. Yeah. So I'll show you this for fun. So this comes out and then there's a little thing here. So this thing gets clogged really easy and it's really hard to clean because it's super fine mesh and the pre-treatment will like, you can see this table, look at this. So well, it, even the table is rusty. Yeah. And this is supposed to not. So and this is pre-treatment. Once it sits, it like coagulates. So if this sits at all, it coagulates in here. Whoa. So if you've got to be like super, proactive with your cleaning on this thing so oh. i imagine as long as you're doing that it's probably not as bad i just there's times where i'm like printing and then i have to run and it sits for the day and how often do you clean versus how often are you supposed to clean so in the summer we were firing all cylinders i was cleaning every day and it was running really well um right now i'm kind of in and out and so sometimes it'll sit for a day or two or three four you know is it kind of like a like a white print head issue that i know someone yeah, exactly. else has you know so <laughs> if you just neglect it it gets worse and worse and worse so i i'm sure this thing is fantastic in fact when it's running it runs super well but it does take as far as all of the like upkeep this is by far the most like and is that like the difficult part just the nozzle is that where... yeah that and i mean you end up spending money because there's this uh hyper flush one of these so all of them have different chemicals but this is hyper flush um and this is what you want to use to run the system or to clean the system and so if you're cleaning it constantly then you go through more of this and then it's just a money thing like but time is money and so if i spend three hours fixing the machine because i neglected it then that's my fault so so when you bought it 
did you buy it as a kit from Omniprint? Did they offer only this one? Was there a, a different option? So this was an upgraded one. They they offered, I think, one lower than this one, but this one has the dual, so you can open it from the front. Don't do it. <gasps> we had a problem last time when we opened it. Yeah, this was. <laughs> so now these are removable. They're just magnet on there. So you can open it from here, or you can do the side access. And so that was like an upgraded version of it. Um, and then you always keep this shirt or a shirt on here. And then a bunch of towels in here just from mess keeping. Yeah, because there's a drain and it's supposed to like, if you, because there's always going to be overspray. Because it'll spray, if you get it clean, then it's spraying wide enough that it's going out the sides as well. So then it goes down to the bottom here and then it's supposed to drain out, but it doesn't. I don't know if it's my table problem or what, but it just sits there. And then eventually it becomes like a quarter inch thick of just like of that sticky sludgy stuff that you sludge. showed Sludge. Yeah. Um, so I found that if you just put tables or, or towels around it, then I can switch out the towels because I have, you know, mess ups and stuff of those. I just use those. Um, and then the shirt, you can do it without, like it's got a nice flatten, but if you, like if you're doing a bunch of shirts and you've got any section of it showing, so like sometimes you'll do the shirt like this, right? And so you'll pre-treat it and these sections here will just gather tons and tons of pre-treatment and so it's wet. So next time you go to lay a shirt down, it's like laying it down in a puddle. So I wonder if that's where you were saying kind of on your first ones where you had a couple of spotches yeah. that didn't wash out. Well, that was maybe why. That and the sludge down in the bottom. I would go and the shirt would hang down in the sludge uh, and get on it. So it's all about just like trying to mitigate those problems. So I've just, the towel situation is, has so far been the easiest solution to that headache. But I guess moral of the story is if you're dedicated and clean it daily, like you're supposed to, it probably won't be a problem. But real life happens. And so it can be finicky but like realistically it it is hard to clean and maintain every single day makes sense so you originally bought director garment printer number two pre-treat and a heat press so or that's right so i had a it came in a kit so it came with um one printer the pre-treatment machine, a heat press, the Q-Rip software, and then I think it came with like one of these buttons, just like the adult. But then when you buy it, it gives you options if you want to do some add-ons. So I did, I think I just did like the adult and the youth one. Okay. That made the most sense at the time. Um, and then the second one that I bought I just got the printer and the Q-Rip software, but then I added on like the chest print and the sleeves and all of the like additional stuff that I've got, I added on at that point. So how much was your initial bundle with the printer, the pre-treat, a heat press, and the rip? How much? It was right about 28000 Okay. And then you bought the second one. How much was just the machine and the rip? I think just the machine was like 23. And then did you buy the other two heat presses independently or did you buy them through Omniprint? So I got the second one, I got the a kit as well that came with the printer and then the second heat press. Got it. And then I bought the third one just as a as its own heat press. And that alone, this was like 1700. So yeah, got that. And then, uh, so roughly that's like fifty five thousand for everything yeah sound about right did you finance it or just pay for it uh i had an investment so it's so kind of like a kind of like trip. kind of like financing <laughs> yeah. it's a long-term finance got it. so i just take yeah so there was just a like a what's the word i'm looking for 
investor shares oh yeah they just get payouts <laughs> when you have a company they took equity there was equity. like an equity got it. <laughs> yeah so we split the price of the machines and then they get an equity share and then so at the end of the year we'll just pay out got it so um and then they do, all, they do finance and then as but far as like the ink costs are pretty arbitrary, but like, what, do you have any other ongoing monthly costs besides just buying ink and pre-treat them? Um, the, no, I mean, just the chemicals. Like, there's a little bottle on the back that when you shut down the machine, because it's a wet cap system, which is awesome because it doesn't clog, it sits in a solution. But you do have to buy the solution. It's relatively cheap, but I feel like I go through it pretty quickly. In fact, it just ran out. Um, so there's that. But I just, when I buy ink and pre treatment, I just re up on that stuff. Um, running three heat presses up my electric bill, like 100 bucks. But that was like, we were running them like eight hours a day, five days a week at that point. Because we have a towel gig that we were doing upwards of like 100 towels a day. And so they're just constantly running. So in the heat of it, heat, get it. <laughs> in the heat of it, uh, it bumped up the utility bill. But it's pretty marginal when you're considering how many towels and how much money you're bringing in from it. So you just break that down into the cost of your everything else. Sweet. Any last words of advice for people? Um, I mean, if you're looking, if you're looking for a direct to garment printer, I realize I'm relatively biased because I've only had these, but I've thoroughly enjoyed these. They do a fantastic job. Um, I don't know. I, I would do it again. That's for sure. And I'm a year in, so. Are you going to buy another one? You know, or are you going to give them to me? <laughs> uh, I've been really tempted I was really tempted to get rid of both of them and get the cheetah printer until I found out it was like $260,000. So I'm more likely to get a third, but you know, we'll see. Can the cheetah fit in your basement? I, it would fit in my basement. It probably just couldn't get it in my basement. I'd have to knock out a wall to do it. And like, that's the other thing I guess is this is what, like a couple hundred square feet that you're operating in. Yeah. It's, um, a little corner of the basement. Yeah, it's. I mean, so originally I had a smaller section, and we outgrew that really quick. In fact, it was this right here. We were running in this section, and that was not doable. Um, I don't know. This is like a fifteen by twenty five. Couple hundred square feet. But granted, that section of it is like office space, so that doesn't really count. Yeah, that doesn't count. The actual stuff we're working in is a couple hundred feet. Well, sweet. Thanks, Spencer. Yeah, of course. Well, big shout out to Spencer for showing us his workshop. If you have questions, leave them down below. I will answer them to the best of my ability by the means of Spencer. <laughs> um, uh, huge shout out to firesprint.com for sponsoring today's video. If you need a good outsource partner to do yard signs, stickers, banners, etc., they are a great resource. You can save 10% off your first order using the link down in the description. All right, Spencer? Right, right there. It's in the bottom of the description. So make sure you check them out. Thank you again for sponsoring the video. Make sure you ask questions. If I don't know the answer, I'll ask Spencer and we'll respond. It did work, even though we took it apart. So thanks as always, Print Fam, and we'll see you in the next one.